Today we're going to see how to build an Arduino digital timer with a 7 segment display and the 74HC595 shift register. In this video I'll be using Arduino Uno, a 4 digit 7 segment display, a 74HC595 shift register, a breadboard, a breadboard power supply, 3 breadboard buttons, 4 220 ohm resistors, 3 10k ohm resistors, and some jumper wires. Here's a diagram of what we're going to be building and throughout the video I will zoom in on a couple of these areas that are a little harder to see so that you can uh, see them better and see where to put the pins. This project involves using a four digit seven segment display and three buttons for user input and a 74HC595 shift register to control the display through the Arduino and I'm using Arduino Uno. A four digit seven segment display has four digits, digit one, two, three, and four and each represents one character from 0 to 9 and each digit consists of seven LEDs or segments and they're arranged in a figure 8 pattern. Now the shift register is used to control the seven segment display and it reduces the number of Arduino pins required. The shift register uses three Arduino pins right here and they shift data into it and control which segments of the display light up. And those three pins are the data pin on pin 8 of the Arduino and that sends the bit pattern to the shift register and that says which segments are going to turn on. The other pin is a clock pin and it's on pin 9 of the Arduino and it tells the shift register when to move data from the data pin to the internal storage of the shift register. And the third pin is the latch pin, pin 10 on the Arduino and that transfers the stored bits from the shift register to the output and it updates the display. Over here on the display we have digit selection pins and in the sketch you'll see them represented as dig 1, dig 2, dig 3, and dig 4. And these pins, which are connected to Arduino pins 5, 4, 3, and 2, they're used to control which of the four digits are active at any given time. And we use multiplexing to display all four digits by switching between them very quickly and it gives the illusion that all the digits are lit simultaneously. Now I previously did a video using multiplexing with a whole bunch of LEDs and it was really a lot of fun. If you haven't seen that, check it out. You can tell which are the common pins of the digits because I have 220 ohm resistors between the display and the Arduino and that's just to limit current and prevent burnout. It'll extend the life of your display. Over here we have our buttons set up and each button's connected with a pull-up resistor configuration. As you can see, the top left of the button is connected to a 10K resistor and that is connected to a 5 volt rail the bottom left of the button is connected to ground and then the top right of the button is connected to an Arduino pin and I used Arduino pins 6, 7, and 11 uh, just because they were available by the time I added the buttons. In the Arduino code you'll see these buttons are set up as input pull up and that configuration keeps the pin in a high state at 5 volt when the button's not pressed. And when the button's pressed it connects the pin to ground and that results in a low state or 0 volt and that's where you get your button press. This first button here, this is a forward button. The second button is a back counting button or a backward button. And then the third button is pause. You press it again and it resets. Multiplexing the display shows one digit at a time by turning on only one digit, either dig one through dig four, and sending the appropriate bit pattern to the seven segment display from the shift register. And this is done in rapid succession using timer one's overflow interrupt and that gives the illusion that all the digits are lit at the same time. The buttons control the counting logic. Now button 1, it counts forward and it's connected to pin 6 and when it's pressed it starts counting forward from 0. And button 2 is our count backward button and it's connected to pin 7 and when it's pressed it starts the timer counting backward from 900 or 9999. And button 3 is our pause reset button. It's connected to pin 11. Now this button pauses the counting when it's pressed once and resets the count to zero if it's pressed twice within a 500 millisecond interval. Now for the seven segment display mapping, the segmap array holds the binary values for each digit from zero to nine, and these binary values determine which segments A to G of the seven segment display should be lit to form the correct number. The data is shifted out of the shift register and latched to display the number on the active digit. Now for a shift register control, the shift out function sends the appropriate binary value to the shift register and that in turn lights up the corresponding segments of the seven segment display to show the digit. We're multiplexing with timer one so we should mention that the timer one overflow interrupt ISR 
is triggered periodically and that's to control the digit that's being displayed and each time the interrupt occurs the disp off or display off function it turns off all the digits and then the display function or disp function turns on the next digit and displays the corresponding value. Now this process repeats really fast and it cycles through all four digits and it creates that effect of a full four digit display despite only lighting up one digit at a time. And this setup allows for a good and efficient way to control a multi-digit seven segment display using just a few Arduino pins thanks to the shift register and the multiplexing. And the buttons allow a manual way or an interactive way to control the counting and the pausing and the resetting of the timer. No doubt that this could be improved upon and I love hearing ideas from you guys so if you have any ideas on how to improve this project feel free to let me know either in the comments or email or Facebook post, you know, whatever you want. I'd love to hear from you. Here's a look at the full code that I used for this video and I believe I went over most of it but I will have this posted on Facebook so look for the posting on Facebook Look in the comments, you'll be able to find the code if, if you want it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, be sure to like the video by giving it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing and share this with somebody who may find benefit from it. And I'll see you again with another video.